Hello and welcome to section 4, Tips on Working with Customer and Survey Data. As the name suggests, the theme for this section is all about effective ways of displaying customer data and survey results. Starting with our very first video, Customer Cohort Analysis with Irregular Bin Sizes. Grouping customers into different cohorts, whether it be based on age or salary, etc., are typical ways of profiling customers. Generally, this is the first step when companies try to make sense of what are the specific trends, tastes, preferences, if any, of individual customer segments. So in this video, we'll be looking at a simple customer loyalty theme data set. It has fields such as customer name, date of birth, gender, reason for joining, age and salary. And our aim with this data set is to see if a person's age, gender or salary has any particular influence over the, their decision to join the customer loyalty program. So that means that we need to segment our customers by age, salary and gender. So being that I mentioned, gender is a particularly easy one because there are already gender flags being the dimension. So I'm just going to quickly build a view and do some analysis. And here I can see that most males and females tend to join due to easy tracking of expenditure. Now on to age groups. The Tableau has a feature called bins, which what it does is it turns a measure into a discrete value. It suggests a bin size for you based on the min and the max value in your data, which of course you can go ahead and suggest a bin size, but I'll leave as is for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that onto the view and then bring out account of customer name. Okay, so these are the number of people I have inside of each of the age bins. The disadvantage of using bins is that A, they don't allow you to make irregular bin sizes if you want to, and B, you have to manually edit the alias in order to create age buckets, or in other words, in order to create a range, which at the moment is not very intuitive at all. So having said that, it's much better to create bins using a calculator field instead. So let's suppose we want to segment our customers by under 20s, 25 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 55, and everybody else is above 55. And I'll call that age bins. So if age is less than 24, then under 25. Else if age less than 30, then 25 to 29. Else if less than 40, then 30 to 39. Else if age less than 56, then 40 to 55. Else above 55. So just as a note, you don't actually need to declare in this expression and ages greater than 24 and so forth because the logic works in a cascading manner. It assesses whether the measure drops into the first bucket, if not, then the second one and the third. The order in which you declare the above expressions are crucial for this logic to work correctly. So let's just replace the, the Tableau bin with the calculated field and see if there are any tendencies. So reason for joining on color. And here it's quite obvious to see that people in the ages 25 to 29 and 30 to 39 bucket, they prefer easy tracking of expenditure above all else. It might also make sense for me to change the default sort so that the under 25 appears very first in the list. And of course what would be very helpful is if I place a label of count of customer name and then change that to a percentage of total running table down. We can definitely use the same logic to group our customers into salary brackets, okay, so which I've already done here and I'll just show you the calculation. And we can go further and even parameterize the bin to segment our customers by the field of choice. Okay, and I've just got to replace the age bins with my select bin link, which is a calculation that links the parameter so that when people choose age, they display the age bin, when gender, display the gender field, when salary, the salary bin that we've created at the very beginning. So I'm just going to replace age bins with the dynamic bin. 
and play around with the toggle. So I can see that I obviously need to fix up my salary so that the under 45s appear at the top of the list. So again, I'm just going to modify the sort. So as you see, binning measures is not only effective, but incredibly easy to do with a calculated field.